During fittings at second swing, we focus heavily on launch angle. But what exactly is it? If you want to find out, you better watch this video. Hey golfers, I'm Thomas Campbell, joined today by Jackie Johnson, and we're both master club fitters at Second Swing. Today we're going to be doing another Trackman series. We're focusing on launch angle today. Jackie, launch angle. It's one of the tabs that we have up on our Trackmans, always looking at it, whether it's someone hitting a wedge, a seven iron, or a driver. What can you tell me of what you think launch angle is? Yeah, I mean, what, the reason why we focus on launch angle is because it's heavily dependent on a couple different things within the metrics of TrackMan, right? So like dynamic loft is, is one of the things it's really tied to. Um, so the more that you can get in an optimal window for launch angle, the more you're going to reach those you know, optimal numbers within TrackMan. Right. Yeah, and then when it comes to fitting, like if, you, if you're doing a driver fitting, for example, it's a great way to know if the ball's flying too high or too low. It's another piece to it, yeah. essentially. So generally speaking, if the ball launches too high, ball usually will follow suit and spin too high as well. Right. So in a fitting, if we notice the launch angle is too high, we're going to fit them into a club that's got less loft on it. Yep. Or if they need a higher launch angle, we're going to give them a club that's got more loft on it. That's during a fitting. You mentioned dynamic loft as well. The launch angle is always going to be just a little bit less than uh, what dynamic loft is, but they do very, very closely relate. And that's a little bit more skill related. But as a fitter, we can help them by giving them a club that's going to give them less loft or more loft to get them there. But also practicing your game, working on compressing the ball with, say, an iron is also going to influence that launch angle based on the dynamic loft as well. Typically what you see is if you have a slower swing speed, you're going to have a higher launch angle. And if you have a faster swing speed, you're going to have a lower launch angle. Yeah, and it, as I mentioned, it, it relates to, to spin. So if a Talk about the PGA Tour, for example. They generate a lot of speed, those, those golfers. If they were going to use a 12 degree driver with a lot of speed, it's going to launch high and the spin's going to be through the roof. It's not going to go to their optimal distance they're trying to achieve. But for golfers that, hey, say have slower swing speed, they need that loft to get the ball up in the air because they're not going to generate as much spin to get them in that optimal window of carry and total distance. Well, today we're going to do some testing to track our launch angles and compare them. So Jackie, we're going to hit seven irons and drivers. So you're going to start first. You're going to hit probably five, seven irons. I'll hit five, seven irons, and we'll compare the differences. Sounds good. Mm, I was going to say a little chunky, but there you go. Oof, that one launched. All right, so Jackie, one thing I was watching as you were hitting these shots is where the ball hit the screen. That last shot you caught got a little bit thin, it looked like. Uh, we'll notice the launch angle was just a little bit lower than the others, but you can see here around about 23.6 degrees with your average launch angle. As I mentioned, I can see where the ripple here is on the screen. It's a little higher than what I'm used to seeing, so I'm gonna guess my launch angle is probably gonna be five or six degrees lower than yours, maybe even a little bit lower. Um, I mentioned that dynamic loft is going to be close to what your launch angle is. And I mentioned your launch angle is always going to be lower than your dynamic loft. So we take a look over here on the far right. We can see dynamic loft at 28.5, launch angle at 23.6. So if you wanted to decrease your launch angle, your dynamic loft would also follow suit. So that makes sense, right? Yep. To do with the loft on the, on the club at, at impact. So the ball will launch lower if you have less loft on the club at impact. It'll launch higher if you have more loft on the club at impact. All right, so let's take a look at seven iron numbers here with me now, and we'll see if there's any differences in these launch angles. Yeah. So the first thing I noticed while we were hitting there is I'm watching where that ball is, is hitting the screen. Yeah. So where, where that ball was taken off. I noticed it was, it was kind of like a right around this point. When you were hitting your seven irons, yeah. it was up quite a bit higher. So I found that really interesting. Um, I was at around about 18 degrees, I think. Yeah, 17.9 on average, you were 23.6. 
So my launch angle is almost five degrees lower than yours. What I also found interesting is remember I mentioned the difference between your dynamic laugh and your launch angle was five degrees before? Yep. We'll look at the difference between my dynamic laugh and my launch angle here. About five degrees as well. 17.9 yep. to 22.4. Mm -hmm. That's actually, it's pretty interesting. So the difference is you need a little bit more loft on the, on the dynamic loft to get the ball up in the air so the ball carries a little further. Yep. While I need to keep it down because I'm going to generate too much spin otherwise. Right. No, it makes sense. I mean, it's true that numbers, we take a look at this and what we predicted to happen, happened. So uh, no surprise here. Yeah, my club speed, it was 14, 16 miles an hour faster, but my launch angle was five, about five degrees less is what we, what we noticed. So it'll be interesting to see if that same trend of five degrees stays true with driver or if it gets a little bit closer together with driver. Yeah, let's check it out. What loft do you have on that driver? Ten and a half. Ten and a half? Yeah. Oof. All right, so Jackie, I actually want to touch on that last shot because <laughs> I know it wasn't your, your best swing. I noticed that the launch angle was actually about four to five degrees higher on, on that one. Yeah. Why do you think that would be higher than those last four shots? Because I hit it off the toe. And open the face. Yeah, the, the club yeah. face. The club face if on that particular shot was actually 7.9 degrees open. Yeah. You take a look at the other shots, you had a couple here that were actually a little bit closed. Mm -hmm. So another thing that is going to influence launch angle is going to be the, whether your club face is closed or open at impact. It's one thing to really pay attention to. So if you hit a pull hook, the ball's going to launch low and it's going to yeah. take off. If you hit a big slice, it's going to launch high and then it's going to go not, maybe not go as far and spin a little bit more. So you can see this one launched a little higher because the face angle was open. Yep. You go back to one here where the face angle was closed. Let's click on this one, for example. You can see this one here, your face angle was closed on this one, and the ball launched about five degrees lower. So face angle is going to be really an influence. But you also brought up another interesting point, where you hit it on the club face. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, if you hit the ball in the middle of the face, you know, it's going to launch kind of how you want it to. But if you catch the ball low on the face, the ball is going to launch low. If you catch the ball high on the face, the ball is going to launch higher as well. Yep. So that's also going to influence the launch angle as well. So there's many variables that go into it. That's important to rem remember because a lot of times I'll say, if you're hitting a driver, if you catch that ball slightly high toe, that's where you want to miss it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss it on the heel or, or low on the face because the ball's not going to go as far because of spin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your driver numbers here on average, if we look here, your average launch angle was 15.7. Uh, dynamic loft was 17.7. .7, so they were a little bit closer together, took about two degrees. I'm going to get some drives now and see how close together we are. All right. That was a good start. That was a really good swing. All right, so let's take a look at the numbers and compare how different our launch angles were to each other. Interesting stuff. Yeah, interesting that your uh, launch angle is higher than mine. Right, now why, why would that be the case? Well, I mean, I, I felt like on my drives, I didn't really, I only hit like one that was pretty good. Otherwise, yep. other than that, there are a couple miss hits in there, which is fine. I mean, we're showcasing, showcasing, you know, those as well. Right. So I think overall, uh, I think my launch angle would have been higher had I hit them a little bit more pure. Um, but especially like the one I hit well was like around 17, I believe. So, you know. But you, I mean, you hit five pretty good drives there, and the numbers are pretty good. <laughs> right. And I touched on club face angle before. Yeah. That's going to be one, one reason why. I'm curious what mine is in yours. My average was 0, 0.0. Yours was average was 1.1. So we can't say it's face angle. Because yeah. your, your face angle on average was one degree more open than mine. 
Let's move over one more spot there to the right. What's the next tab just right of uh, face angle? Uh, we got attack angle. Attack angle. Yep. Uh, my attack angle was a little ridiculous. Yeah. I hit up on the ball, and it's not intentional, but over time I've started hitting the ball more and more up. Yeah. It's how I can hit the ball further, because I hit up on it, I keep the spin rate down, high launch, low spin. I mentioned PGA Tour golfers versus LPGA Tour golfers. They have a lower attack angle with their driver. They have more speed, but their attack angle is actually on average one degree down. Well, L LPGA golfers, their attack angle, is, I believe, is about three or four degrees up. The attack angle is also going to be a huge difference there as well. Why the ball um, launch, my, why my launch angle was just as high as yours is because by attack angle, I hit up on it. Yeah. Uh, other thing to keep, keep consideration here too, when you're a golfer, you're looking at launch angle, the loft on the driver. You'll get a t you've got a 10 and a half degree driver. I have a nine degree driver. Mm -hmm. So even though I had less loft on my, on my driver than, than yours, um, I still launched the ball a little higher just due to that attack angle. So attack angle is going to really influence how high the ball goes, essentially. Right. Yeah, so to finish up, looking at dynamic loft is interesting. We're looking at your dynamic loft over here on the right. It's at 17.7. .7. Take a look at mine. It's at, it's at 18. As I mentioned, that attack angle is going to be, the, and the loft on the golf club, is going to be the big influence to why we were so close together. Right. And you mentioned you didn't hit those five drives the best. And you mentioned normally you have a little higher launch angle than that. Yeah. Because you were definitely leaving a little bit of distance on the table. Yeah. So I noticed your launch angle at 15.7 and that spin rate under 2,000 with your speed. I would like to see that spin rate a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah. You also grabbed a 10.5 degree driver from the store. You didn't have your clubs yeah. with today. <laughs> so that could also be an influence as well. It's going to be head design that's going to influence uh, how the ball launches as well, too. Yeah, I think it's good to note, like, you know, I was, I was hitting the Mizuno STZ, so the spin on that, you know, obviously I was hitting off the toe, so that has a factor to my spin rate, right? Yep. But I definitely wasn't carrying it as far as I normally do. Typically, with my driver, I'm going to carry it about 205, usually, so I definitely left a lot out there. You know, normally I'm hitting my driver 240, so a lot of that's just, you know, impact of where I was hitting it. Um, and yeah, that's why my launch was lower. Yeah, and my, these are pretty stock numbers for me. Sometimes my launch angle doesn't mean my, sorry, sometimes my attack angle doesn't quite get that high. Yeah. Um, but sometimes hitting inside, it gets pretty high and you know, it's 8.2. I don't really want to have an attack angle really any higher mm -hmm. than that. And I have tried less loft on the driver to bring it down. Once I have less loft on the driver, it's harder for me to control too. Yeah. When you do hit up on the ball, it is harder to control. Yes, you can hit the ball further. Um, just think of a comparison like on tour, like Rory McIlroy. When he hits up the ball, he can hit the ball super far, but he can hit it pretty far offline. Um, Bryson DeChambeau obviously hits the ball pretty far, far offline. Yeah. Then you've got like Dustin, Dustin Johnson. He think he hits down on about one degree with the driver, but he hits the ball fairly straight. He could hit the ball so much further if he hit up on it, but for them, keeping the ball in the fairway is imperative as well. So it depends on the golf course you're playing. It depends on the hole design. Attack angle is going to influence it, but that's just going to be another factor that influences launch angle. So there's like several different ways to improve your launch angle. Can be through attack angle, can be through hip impact location, can be through a good fitting, getting fit for the right golf club. Going back to seven iron, if you're playing a game improvement iron and you don't need it, that ball is going to launch probably four or five degrees lower yep. because the club loft is four or five degrees lower than it needs to be. If you're playing a game improvement 29 degree seven iron versus a 34 degree seven iron, it's five degree difference, the ball's gonna launch five degree lower. That's gonna be uh, another influence there too. And then talking about the dynamic loft, dynamic loft with the, for, with the irons. If you have an iron and you're like compressing the ball at impact, mm -hmm. naturally you're gonna have less loft on the club. If you're hanging back on a little bit, that ball's gonna launch a little bit higher as well. So there's a few factors that go on into it. It's a very, very important factor because typically the higher the launch angle, the higher the spin rate on the golf ball. Yeah, I think that's like how I think of launch angle is just really tied to spin more than like, it's the easiest way to explain it to anyone that you're fitting is like your launch angle is really tied to the spin. I mean, obviously when we take a look at your numbers here and you think, well, you had a higher, um, launch angle 
and our spin rate was actually pretty similar on the driver. Yeah. But there also is, you know, swing speed and hit location that's tied to why that was too. So. Right. Yeah. The, the spin loft on the on the ball that I the spin loft I generated because my attack angle so far Hi. up it kept that spin rate yeah. down, and that's why it didn't quite resemble it. Now, if I was going to have, if my attack angle was neutral and I still had a launch angle at, I think it was what 16 degrees, yeah. that ball would have probably spun about a thousand RPMs more. Yeah. Yeah. So golfers, if your launch angle is too high or too low, or if you want to come in and get fit and take a look at your launch angle, come see us at Second Swing. We would love to help you out. Also, if you love this content, make sure to subscribe to our channel, send us some comments, and let us know what your launch angle is like with your driver.